welcome back to exotic astrology nice to see you back and today we are extremely delighted to have sanati ji with us again and today we will discuss on spirituality and discuss many many charts on spiritual personalities which sanati ji will discuss and i have brought some uh, spiritual charts of common people so many times people think that spirituality is only for the people who are already enlightened and people who are already there in the holy books like you know ramayana mahabharata or shrimad bhagavatam it's not for the common people and it is also not for the married people it is only for the people who disappear into the forest right so that is why i have brought charts of common people who i know from last 10 15 years and sanati ji will show charts of divine personalities so there will be a mix of uh, both the areas all right so welcome sir to exotic astrology once again and the stage is all yours welcome namaste babi ji ji it's so good to be back here with you on exotic astrology uh our saturn k2 presentation did wonderful the community had received that very well still getting many views on that and it's good to be back here with you to discuss a spiritually focused and oriented topic i think it's wonderful that we're looking at the chart of the average human native uh which is constantly being grabbed by the grahas influenced by the grahas so they can use that for their spiritual evolution and when we look at the chart of the guru or the sat guru the fully enlightened or the awakened guru they have actually evolved past their chart um that doesn't mean that the chart doesn't show certain things the chart will still show certain things but they have evolved past any malefic or negative influence in their chart only manifesting the most evolved or most uh, highest vibration of any type of uh, planetary conjunction so i would like to start by sharing my guru uh amaji so before i uh begin to get into this discussion i just want to do a quick uh chant or prayer to my guru um and then uh so if you'll just give me the moment while i do this quick prayer for her om swami vamata cha pita tvameva tvameva bandhu cha saka tvameva tvameva vijya dravinam tvameva tvameva sarvam amriteshwarema tvameva sarvam amriteshwarena namaha tvameva sarvam amriteshwarena namaha hari om om namah shivaya so when we look at the chart of any master or awakened uh teacher we can't look at it from the perspective of a, of a normal human being here just like when we're looking at lord krishna chart lord rama chart you do not approach these charts from the perspective of a normal human being because these are evolved spiritual beings when you're looking at the cycle reincarnation um even though there could be some debate but i'm not here to debate but they have gone through the maha samadhi which means they have ended the cycle of reincarnation and these master teachers they come back here to assist the humanity to assist the planet to assist the earth to offer service to this planet but they have already broken the cycle of reincarnation so the way that their chart will be influencing them from a spiritual perspective is going to be completely different Now one thing that we notice about Amaji's chart is that she is an exalted Saturn ascendant. We have Saturn at 3 degrees in the sign of Libra, so her ascendancy is to Saturn exalted. Saturn is the serpent, Saturn is the shudra. What is the most evolved evolution of that energy? She is the servant to God. She is the servant to humanity. She is the servant of love. And so all of these strong servant energies are exalted within her nature within her lifelong purpose in this lifetime. So it's very important to notice the Saturn exalted here in the ascendant position. But I also one of the things which is very remarkable when we look at the chart of my guru is she has the moon exalted in the 8th house position. 
So the moon is exalted in the Rohini nakshatra in the eighth house position. Uh, because of this influence in her chart, um, normally this could cause some difficulties. So if you are a regular human being, you know, uh, work a regular job, have a regular wife, this might have some difficult influences on your chart because the moon is in the mind and it's in the eighth house here and it's very strong in the eighth house. So there could be lots of mental vulnerability. That's if this person was manifesting as a completely human. Um, now, this is the house of chronic disease. One of the things that Amma's devotees have noticed is that, she, um, or have said, is that she can take away the disease of other people. So normally this moon in the Rohini nakshatra in, uh, uh, or in the Kritika nakshatra in the uh, eighth house position, uh, it could be influencing uh, certain challenges. But for Amma, she has transcended these challenges. That means that actually, if you are one of her disciples and you have some type of disease, let's say you have the cancer, let's say you have the AIDS, let's say you have any other type of horrible disease, you go with an open heart and devotion and you beg towards Amma. And when she give you darshan, please take this disease away from me. She will take it away. The eighth house has also been the uh, house of drugs. Some people with moon in the eighth house, if they were a human being, they would be tempted towards drugs. But Amma is a completely sober individual, and she actually transcends this energy to take away the addictions of other people. I have actually met individuals, they have the tobacco addiction, they have the cigarette addiction, they go to Amma, they say, please take away my addiction. And tomorrow, they wake up and they don't want cigarette and they don't want tobacco. So there is this possibility of the transcending of all karma. There's Ketu, the moksha karika in the house of career. This means in her house of her career, she's helping bringing the others towards moksha. But also, if you look at the, the um, perspective of her life, she's always been held to a higher uh, position. So the, and it's in a cancer sign. So people have always regarded her as this um, individual who can bring us to moksha. See, because in uh, Jyotish, there are many different types of karma. There's the fixed karma, there's the movable karma, and there's the dual karma. And for the movable and the dual karma, if we as human beings work hard enough, we can, and, and, and Bobby G will show you this when he looks at the chart of his individuals, they can evolve past this karma. But sometimes we have very difficult fixed karmas. And according to the great rishis, the only way for us to evolve out of these difficult fixed karmas is with the help of a guru. So we see uh, K2 position in the 10th house, Jupiter position in the ninth house, all of this strong guru vibration and helping people get closer to moksha, helping people get closer to Mahasamadhi. So this is a very powerful position. I always look at her D60 chart. Um, we find that the moon and Venus are conjunct in the eighth house as well. Uh, I like the D60 chart for the past lifetime. So there is this K2 in the 12th house um, position in the D60 chart. So, I, I, so most of her disciples believe, and I believe, that Amma has already achieved the Maha Samadhi. So then why is she here? Saturn is exalted in the ascendant to be of service to the humanity, to be of service to the people, to help us evolve past our afflictions, to help us uh, maintain our spiritual evolution. And so, again, we're looking um, in the chart of a sat guru, of a master guru, both how they have transcended any malefic influence of their chart to become only the most evolved vibration from that chart. But we can also see how the chart kind of influences their lifetime. See, because you have Saturn exalted in the ascendant. 
and many of Amma's disciples say that she is very strict, say that she is very disciplined. If you are one of her disciples, she says, go do this, go do that. Why haven't you done this already? So she's a very disciplinarian type of guru. And this comes from the exalted Saturn and the ascendant. Every person who takes her as her disciple, uh, they become uh, more disciplined throughout their life. So um, I think that's one of the many reasons I have chosen her as my guru, because very early in my life, I lacked discipline. <coughs> so when I chose her as my guru and took my oath and got my uh, mantra at the age of 15, 15 years ago, it was very much the start of my path towards discipline. And I don't think I would be anywhere near where I am today if it weren't for her grace. So pranams to my guru and uh, thank you, Bobby Gigi, for letting me share her chart. And uh, I hope that you have enjoyed that. Thank you. Yeah, if you could just uh, share the chart again, I also have some Please. insights. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, in this as uh, because it's a Libra Lagna, so Saturn is also the Yoga Karaka in the chart. So what, what I have generally seen is uh, if the Yoga Karaka is very strongly linked with the Ascendant or in any house in exaltation or in a very great dignity, then, then what I have seen is these people, uh, they, they are very much, uh, they do something which they love very much. Not that they may not do it in the career front, but in general, you know, they will be somebody who they like being very much. And this is what is very true with uh, her, I guess. Now she does it all very naturally. It's not that somebody is forcing her or something, you know, it's like, and the other thing I can see here is the ninth Lord and the 10th Lord, Moon and Mercury. You know, they are, they are in the Moksha houses. Yeah. And they are also in trying to each other, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> this is also very good placement I have seen. And the most important thing I would say here is, I see the Lord of the Ascendant placed in the eleventh house. <laughs> that is a extremely very beautiful placement to have in any chart. So this chart, uh, what I understand is, if I would not know this person before. <laughs> If I would just read this like a, any any ordinary chart, no? uh, then I would say first of all, this person is a very uh, very fixed individual. The person is very much determined. The person has a lot of willpower. And then she has applied this to spiritual path. <laughs> very beautiful this is. So now I will also start my start sharing. Thank you, thank you. That's uh, and and one thing I just want to uh, double comment on that you already mentioned is the the Mercury in the twelfth Baba is uh, in its natural sign, and it's yeah. also far away enough from the sun that there's no combustion. Um, so she's um, and um, before you get Darshan from her. She gives one hour logical speech. Okay. So one of her things too is um, she helps um, kind of help the spiritual evolutionary process for people by talking to them logically. And Mercury is in a really strong position here in the 12th Bab. Mercury is exalted and it's like perfect Buddha Aditya Yoga is there. <laughs> so I think that's why she, people um, are able to very much digest what she has to say. Yeah, and uh, Sun is the you know Lord of the 11th house of contacts and network circles and other people. That is also in the 12th house. So that's showing that, you know, she will have a lot of contacts, but it will be related to the matters of the 12th house. Yes. And Mark is also the ninth Lord, you know, so that religion stuff is coming and it's also the 12th Lord. Yeah. So, so it's a very beautiful and Jupiter is itself sitting in the ninth house. I know. I feel like we could stare at this chart all day. One more thing is Rahu fourth, 10th house access could show why she has become a guru internationally in terms of. Um, having lots of, uh, because of K2 in the 10th and Rahu in the 4th house, 
yes, she's recognized as a guru in her home, but pretty much every country across the globe. Yeah, and it's a beautiful chart. And you know, the Lagna Lord and Seventh Lord Mars, they are also conjunct. So in my experience, I have seen when these placements are there, you know, the Lagna Lord, Seventh Lord, Kanjang or mutually aspecting each other. Then uh, dealing with other people becomes a very important part of their life. I've seen this in my experience that and that's what uh, she does 24 hours. Like she's all about other people and <laughs> amazing yeah. it is. So let me let you share your screen, Babi Gigi. Yeah, yeah, I will start the share. Okay, can you see? I will just pull out one chart. All right. So I think I will start in reverse. <laughs> All these two are the same charts. I will. Okay, I will start with this chart. Yes, so uh, you can see the chart, right? Yes. Yeah, so <clears throat> this is the chart of uh, one of my very good friends. He He's here in Germany. Again, as I said, these are charts of common man. <laughs> common man you know externally because these are all uh, they are very much uh, spiritually committed and elevated so they're definitely great souls but they're just doing normal stuff like uh, you and me and you know it's like like everybody else so that is why i say these are common man charts so the my purpose behind showing these charts is that if these people can do then we can also do so whoever is watching this video you can get inspired to do and yes I have not included dashas here because if I include dashas, then many people will say, oh, this person was lucky to have that dasha. That is why this happened. That is why that happened. Well, that's correct. But even if the dasha is, the mahadasha is not there, but the antar dashas of these planets will always be there in your chart. So you do not have to wait for an astrologically compatible mahadasha where you think that, you know, oh, my spiritual life will go like rocket tomorrow. It doesn't work that day. You cannot just do nothing for 40 years. And then after 40 years, your so-called uh, any Mahadasha starts and you just uh, be, go like a rocket. It doesn't work like that. So do, you don't have to wait for any Mahadasha to come. As uh, they say, you know, the best time to start spiritual practices is now. So... Whatever you have now, you just utilize. So there you go. This is uh, one of my friend's charts, a very good friend of mine. So in this chart, you can see that the Lord of the Ascendant is in the 12th house. Now, as you were saying last time for moon in the 8th house. Now that could be a difficult placement for general people. Similarly here, if the Lord of the Ascendant is in the 12th house, they say that the person uh, could be pessimistic sometimes or the person may not uh, take those actions necessary for doing better things in life. That's true in a generic sense. But the 12th house also is the house of moksha and spiritual stuff. So therefore, just because if you see the Lord of the Ascendant in the 12th, just do not make a blanket statement that it's a bad placement. So here uh, Saturn is in own sign. It is in the 12th house. And uh, you can also see that here Venus, it is the Lord of the 9th house. And here Venus is with Jupiter and it is also aspecting the Ascendant. So I have seen that in my experience when Venus uh, or Jupiter or the 9th Lord especially links with the Ascendant then this becomes a very powerful situation because that shows that some kind of an influence of a guru is always coming to you because you represent the ascendant or the ascendant lord. So Jupiter, Venus and the ninth lords, you know, ninth lord, they, these three planets, they are the natural gurus, I would say. So here the ninth lord Venus, the ninth lord is itself Venus. And then Jupiter is also there. Both of them are aspecting the ascendant. So this shows that the word of the gurus will affect this person very much. Okay. And 
any stuff related to spirituality will excite this person very much and that's what is very true and another significator of astrology of uh, spirituality is the moon because you know moon is a sign uh, the sign of cancer where jupiter gets exalted so moon also is in the ninth house in this chart and mercury if you see the degrees it's having the highest degree in the chart so mercury is the atma karaka in the chart and mercury is uh, quite combust here <laughs> with the sun of course and uh, another thing i have seen here that if the lord of the moksha houses you know they exchange signs or they sit in each other's houses then also it is a fantastic uh, placement for spirituality i have seen it in my experience so here you can see the 12th lord is in 12th house and the 8th lord is in the 8th house and so these are some of the placements which you can you know see that these are very good placements and the atma karaka is exalted here and if you know the degrees it is also vargottama this this degree inside virgo it is also vargottam so this is a fantastic chart and ketu in the fifth house uh, is very good for meditation they say so there are multiple things here one is the relationship of the ninth lord with the lagna as i said venus is the ninth lord aspecting the lagna it's a very powerful placement so this is one chart which i have seen and now i will pull out the next uh, chart Bobby, G -G, may i make a comment on that chart quickly definitely there are some things that i really like about this chart for spirituality and i i, I love that you brought this chart out um as you mentioned, the ascendant ruler is in the 12th bhava. So then the, you have Saturn in uh, moksha position. Then you have Mercury and uh, Sun also in a moksha position. So one thing when I look at for spiritual evolution is these activations in the 12th house and uh, the 8th house. Now Saturn in the 12th house, it is in its own sign. Um, but a lot of times the evolution that comes with Saturn, it's something that um, is kind of forced on us through the circumstances in our life. So this person probably, at, um, as far as their Saturn karma goes, was forced to spiritually grow. They had to become more patient. They had to become more humble. They had to become more accepting. These are the different types of spirituality growth. And then I also thought in the fifth house, K2 of the past lifetime, karma is in the sign of the Gemini, which is depositing in that eighth house where Mercury is exaltation position. So this person could have a real uh, thirst for knowledge when it comes to mystical, occult, esoteric things. Uh, even as the house of disease, they could have knowledge in Jyotish, knowledge in Ayurveda, other forms of a of alternative medicine might uh, be beneficial for them. Um, so uh, this is a really good position, I think, uh, a really good chart um, for someone who um, wants to have a spiritually oriented life, especially knowledge of it. Um, but Saturn was saying, well, even if they didn't want to have a spiritual life, they would have no choice because there will be some circumstances in their life which they will have to um, kind of uh, practice these more spiritual qualities. Um, and, and then the last thing I wanted to say is spirituality and moksha. So like often terms we think of spirituality as a good thing, but it also has to do with letting go of our attachments. So this person has strong position in 8th house, strong position in 12th house, so they've had to let go of many things and uh, that will make you a spiritual person. Yeah. And there's another thing here, you know, Saturn and Mars are in mutual aspect. Yeah. So that, that nine, 12 axis is there and, you know, moon is also kind of, uh, you know, afflicted by Mars and Saturn. So what you have said is very true. <laughs> things have not come very easily for this person spiritually. And uh, there's some very severe health issue which this person has, which I will not mention here. It's related to one of the bodily organs. But uh, yeah, so there, there are health issues because of this ascendant lord in the 12th and, you know, uh, Atma Karaka being combusted by the sun. At the same time, because the Atma Karaka is exalted and it is also Vargottam. 
so this person is very strong will you know in spite of all these things <laughs> yeah and uh, ascendant is such a yes yeah. yes so, so so then person is diseased but also they're supposed to become healer Yes, it is last degree of <laughs> Satavisha. So he has to figure something out to preserve his life. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, so now I will uh, pull off the other chart. This. Thank you for letting me share, Babiji. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, uh, this is one of the charts of my seniors. So this is another super chart, you know. <laughs> So when, when first of first you glance at this chart, you are like, maybe this is a chart of some uh, avatar of Lord Vishnu or somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and this person is born on the on Akshay Triti, as you can see, both sun and moon are exalted, which is this year on tenth May, I guess. And this is um, this is an extraordinary chart. This is like. <laughs> The Lord of the Ascendant. Very cool. Very cool chart, Babiji. 